What's going on, Tiger fans? I'm John Check, and this is the first edition of the Hot Corner, which is an in-depth look at all things Tigers baseball. So if you haven't noticed or lived under a rock in the last week, Felix Hernandez got paid. The Seattle Mariners locked up their right-handed, flame-throwing, uh, nasty pitcher Felix Hernandez, which is uh, going to keep him from even being free agent eligible for seven more years. He got seven years, $175 million. He got paid. And we're moving closer and closer to the very first $200 million pitcher. Um, Felix Hernandez is now the highest-paid pitcher in baseball, uh, outdoing CC Sabathia, New York Yankees, who was, the for the longest time, the highest-paid pitcher in baseball. So today I'm going to talk about how does that affect our very own Justin Verlander? I don't have to tell you guys how good Justin Verlander's been since the day he laced up the cleats and threw on the old English D back in 2005, which was his debut. Uh, but, you know, his first full season was in 06. But he's been great since day one. And over the last few years, you know, he has really made it to where he is inching closer and closer to being the first $200 million pitcher. And with Felix Hernandez now getting that kind of money, you know, we're inching closer to $200 million pitchers, it's going to put a strain on the market for frontline starting pitching. Uh, you look at 2014, uh, Hernandez, Kershaw, and Verlander all would have been free agents uh, now that Hernandez is off the market. Him and uh, Verlander, Clayton Kershaw, are now going to be free agents at the same time, uh, pending lockup uh Free, via free agency. Uh, so will Verlander get $200 million now that Felix Hernandez got $175 million? This is what I want everyone to take a quick second and think about. When Verlander in 2009 got his contract extension, he got $80 million. In the course of four years, frontline starting pitching has gone up almost $100 million. So it just goes to show you how fast this market has shot up over the last few years. Anibal Sanchez, who, you know, maybe four years ago in Verlander got his extension, would maybe be a $35 million pitcher, $40 million pitcher, is now making what frontline starters were getting four years ago. So when Verlander becomes a free agent, and let's hope he doesn't, but he becomes a free agent, who knows how much more the market's going to get driven up by then with Felix Hernandez getting this huge contract. You know, because every time a, a, a guy gets a new contract, like Cole Hamels when he signed his $120 million contract, when C.J. Wilson signed a contract for nearly $100 million, it pushes the market value of pitchers up. And Anibal Sanchez, you know, number three, number four starters now are going to want Anibal Sanchez money. So Verlander, if he has another two good seasons like he has uh, his last few seasons, you know he's had a Cy Young, an MVP, another near Cy Young season last season, he very well could be the first $200 million pitcher. Now, I don't think Verlander is going to get $200 million, simply for the fact that he's going to be over 30 when he hits the market. We still don't know how good these next two years are going to be this year and uh, next year. Uh, you know, it is Justin Verlander, so we can expect nearly the same, nearly 20 wins, 200-plus strikeouts, 300-plus innings, you know, ERA sub-3. I'm guessing he's going to do over the next two years. But I think teams might – I think the Tigers might not give him $200 million just because – He's going to want the years, okay? He's going to get the seven, eight years. I can see that. But the $200 million because he's going to be 31 years old, and that's kind of a lot to give to a guy, you know, just entering the wrong side of 30. But I do think he will get seventy, $175 plus million dollars uh, like Felix Hernandez got because he has been just as good as Felix Hernandez over the last few years. He's going to command it, and especially over the last few years, being the best pitcher in baseball. And the sky's the limit with this guy, and he keeps throwing up Cy Young-type seasons. He's going to get well close to $200 million. Now, I think Clayton Kershaw is going to end up being the first $200 million pitcher because he's going to be, I think, under 27 years old when when he hits free agency and he plays for the Dodgers the Dodgers are not afraid to throw out uh, large contracts you know they they assumed so many contracts you know Beckett Gonzalez Crawford from the Red Sox and they took it no sweat they have a, over 200 million dollar payroll you know Magic Johnson's throwing out those hundreds like nothing and so I think Kershaw has the best shot at being the first 200 million dollar pitcher because he plays for the Dodgers an ownership that is not afraid to ship out cash and they're they're just buying you know they're really making sure they lock up everyone long term so I think Clayton Kershaw has the best shot because he's younger in the organization he plays for but Verlander will get close to 200 million dollars you can be damn sure that he will get that much money because he is going to command a lot and Adam Hernandez last night on the majors was making a great point that 
it's going to have to, it might come down to Verlander or Miguel Cabrera because Miguel Cabrera, I think, is a free agent a year after Verlander. I'm not sure. I know it's right around the time of that. That's a lot of money. And Miguel Cabrera is going to be in the same situation that Albert Pujols was in. When Cabrera uh, hits free agency, I think he's going to be 31 or maybe 32, just like Pujols was. Pujols was 31. And you look at Cabrera's numbers and compare him with Pujols' first 10 years, they're very comparable. You know, Pujols was a bit better in his first 10 years than Miguel Cabrera was, but they're very comparable. And Cabrera is probably going to get that huge $200 million contract just like Pujols did just based on all his previous accomplishments over the last, what would be like 13 seasons, 14 seasons by then. So he will get the big $200 million contract like Pujols got and someone will sign him long term because the Tigers don't jump on it. You know, someone will sign Cabrera long term, which brings you down to the point who you're going to want to give $200 million to. And it's a great point that, you know, Tiger fans going to have to come to realization. It's going to be either Verlander gets that $200 million or Cabrera gets at 200 million because the Tigers payroll is going to keep increasing every year every year every year and you have that 189 million dollar luxury tax line and someone is going to have to get signed and someone may have to go you know there's going to be other options you know the Tigers might not resign you know like a, a, a Max Scherzer or they might let a Doug Fister go because who knows how much Doug Fister Max Scherzer is going to get. If Anibal Sanchez got eighty million, Doug Fister could want that much money. He's been Fister's been as good as anyone in the second half of the last two seasons. Look at Max Scherzer; he puts together a couple consistent seasons. Why couldn't he get eighty million dollars? So you got a lot of contracts coming up, and this and all the and the markets just keep going up and up and up. So with this Felix Hernandez deal. It's pushing the market up even higher for Verlander. And then with the Anibal Sanchez deal, it's pushing up the market higher and higher for guys like Scherzer and Fister. So this uh, Hernandez deal affects the Tigers a lot because who knows how much Verlander is going to get and who knows how much that's going to affect the Tigers down the line trying to keep Verlander long term and, you know, other guys as well as that. I do think that Mike Illich will open up the wallet and keep Justin Verlander around simply for the fact he's homegrown. He's been here his entire career. He said many of times he wants to stay here, but he's also hinted towards he wants to, you know, he said it would be fun to test out free agency. Uh, but I do think he will get him locked up long term. But after that, say Verlander gets $190 million, you know, the pocketbook is going to be kind of tight because how are you going to assign the rest of these guys that have been good for your franchise so far, like Scherzer, especially last year, Fister. You know, how are you going to keep those guys locked up? Because eventually you can't keep handing out $200 million contracts uh, to all these players because it don't work out and you got to have draw a line somewhere with the financial uh, abilities. So that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed the first edition of A Hot Corner. Many more of these to come.